Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you five cars that you could buy where you won't lose money on them. So I've bought a lot of cars. I've owned over, been lucky enough to own over 100 cars. And a lot of them actually went up in value. Cars that I still have and cars that I've sold. So if I was buying a car today, uh, I'm going to give you cars in all different price ranges. I'm going to start with the low price, ra price ranges, and then we'll go up as if you won uh, Powerball. So remember, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, hit that notification bell so you won't want to miss our next video. I post three videos every week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we have over 630 car reviews on this channel, the most of any YouTube channel. All right, so let's say you want to buy a car and you want it to hold its value. So is this a good choice in the E46 M3? I think it's a, this is not in my top five, but it's, I'll call it an honorable mention. It's definitely a car if you buy a clean, you know, low mileage, non-accident car, probably an original pink car, that it will go up in value because that's pretty rare nowadays. I think you need the manual transmission as well. But these cars are a labor of love. You know, they were sold here in the United States, model years 01 to 06. So the uh, newest one is 14 years old. The oldest one is 19 years old. So you're definitely going to have to replace a lot of parts, do a lot of preventive maintenance, and that's going to be expensive. So yeah, I think these cars can go up two or 3000 a year, maybe even more as the years go on, but you may give that back in maintenance. So could you buy a Mint E46 M3, maintain it, and appreciation uh, goes higher than your maintenance and insurance and repair costs? Yeah. But I don't. I think these other cars are going to go up more and probably need less maintenance. So I would call this as an honorable mention. Other honorable mentions, which are really close to making the top five list, is uh, the Honda S2000. I've had two of those. Both of them I sold uh, for nice profits. They require very little maintenance. And if you get a low mileage one, I, now I did a ton of videos on S2000, so we won't get into that here. Uh, you can watch those videos. Just type in Glenn's Car Collection, Honda S2000, the search bar. I'll tell you how to pick out the perfect one that I think will go up in value. So here's going to be an honorable mention because a lot of modified cars, you probably have to have stock, low mileage one. Uh, the tops can be very expensive to replace. So you need a car that either has low mileage with a great top or a newer top. So all those are going to factor in. So that's an honorable mention. I think you have a really good bet to drive that car for free. Well, it'll appreciate more than you put into it since the maintenance costs are low. But... Uh, I think there are some better cars that are just going to appreciate faster than that car well, or higher than that car well. Uh, another uh, one honorable mention, which I've also owned, uh, Lotus Exige S. And you could probably make a case for the lease here. The Exige S's are much rarer. They can go up in value a lot faster. The problem with the Exige S is they're fragile cars. So there's really like two main pieces of the car, the front clam and the rear clam, and they can cost $20,000 to replace. And once you have an accident with an Exige S, it's not as valuable as a clean car. So you'd have to have a clean low mileage car that's original paint, no accidents, they're all manual transmissions, and keep it that way. There can be very difficult to drive if you're not used to snap oversteer or you never had a powerful car. It's very low to the ground, so it's easy to hit curbs going in your driveway or when you go in a parking space, that curb in front of you. So a lot of those cars are total just because the clam costs so much to replace. If you have a new one, it tends to, uh, they tend insurance tends to total the car out and it'll have a salvage title. And obviously those cars are not going up in value. So that's an honorable mention. I sold my Exegest for a profit as well. But it's a little more difficult to do that car because it's uh, fragile. And right now they're at very high prices. So it would kind of be, I don't know how much higher they're going to go. All right. So these are five foolproof cars. And we're going to start at the lower end of the spectrum. So these cars you could still get for under $50,000. There's not too many cars you can buy for under $50,000 $50, that's going to almost guarantee to appreciate. And one car for sure, and Haggerty uh, named it as its like number three car for appreciation is the BMW Z3 M Coupe. This is actually my car that you're looking at. This is a 2001. So here in the United States, they were built from 1999 to 2002, about 3,000 coupes. There's a lot more convertible, so we're, the coupes are the ones that are appreciating. First two years, it had the S52 engine from the E36 M3. The last two years, like mine, mine's a 2001, 01 and 02, they had the S54 engine from this car, the from my car, the E46 M3. And uh, that engine is to die for and it totally transforms the car. It's it's a lighter M3, think of it as a 300 pound lighter uh, E46 M3 with essentially the same horsepower. Instead of 333 horsepower, it has 315 horsepower, but 
it has a lower power to weight ratio and you really feel it in this car. Now these cars are easy to total too. They have some snap over steer and it's very hard to find one. Here in the United States, they only made 678 examples. So you will pay good money to get one, but these can easily be a 70 or $80,000 car five to 10 years from now. And that'll cover all your costs. It's still based on, you know, a BMW. I mean, it is a BMW M car. So it will be expensive to repair. So you still have some of the same problems that the S54 engine has and the and the E46 M3 has. So you will sink some money into this car, but the appreciation, uh, sky's the limit for this car. So I think you'll make it all back in appreciation if you get a clean car. The next car that's up is over 50,000 now. Maybe a 100,000 mile car with an accident is 50,000, but it's this car, the BMW 1 Series M. This is my car as well. Uh, it's a 2011 model made one year only here in the United States. Now, in the United States, they were very rare cars. Uh, they sold 740 of them, and they only sold about 6,000 throughout the world, which is very low uh, compared to, you know, they've sold a million uh, M3s. So these cars are, are great cars. Again, 740 here. I think the cars that I'll appreciate the most will be this color, the Valencia Orange, 309 examples in the United States, one year only. Manual transmission, stick shift, and they don't make it anymore. The one series is replaced with the two series, so you have a. This is a safe place to put your money because there'll never be another one series here in the United States. So they can make an M2, M2 Comp, M2 Competition, brand new M2 on the on the new platform when that comes out. Another M2, another M2 Comp, another M2 CS, and M2 CSL. But there'll be never be another one M. So these cars will easily be a hundred thousand dollar cars. Uh, the average car, this is probably in the 65, 70,000 range while I'm filming this video, which is uh, February of 2020. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next five to 10 years, these are $100,000 cars. And if you get a good one, uh, maintenance isn't bad at all. They're very, very reliable cars with that N54 engine. Just don't modify it. If you modify them, you could have problems. But if you keep it stock, uh, I think you'll do very well here. And it's, I'm telling you, it's one of the most favorite cars I've ever driven. All right, the next car on the list starts at about 50000 for a used one to about 150000 and that is the Acura NSX. Now, Acura only existed here in North America, so where you live, it may actually be called the Honda NSX. This is the car you're looking at is my 2005 Acura NSX, and this is the last year they made it here in the United States. So here in the United States, they made a model year 1991 to 2005. So the fixed headlight cars, which are like mine, which are 02 to 05, are all six-figure cars now. They all sell for 100000 and they're probably heading real close for these 05s. I think they're going to be close to 150000 I think they'll probably stick to that. I don't know that they'll ever reach 200000 Uh To get into the NSX market, you can get a 91, and most of the NSX is made were actually 1991s. They sold 8900 here in the United States, and, and about 5600 were 1991s. 1991s do not have power steering, so if you have to tighten a tight parking space, but... Uh, or turn around or do a three-point turn that may be a little tough but out on the road uh, it feels really good the cheapest ones are about fifty thousand dollars for a higher mileage 91 but still worth every penny i always bought other cars lotus xe just came in s and they were fantastic cars but when i bought the nsx i'm like where's this car been my whole life and i've actually owned two of those cars that's how good they are and my long beach blue pearl 05 that you see here uh is definitely a keeper for me all right, and the fourth car on our list is the Porsche 993 Turbo. I know I own this car as well, but I've owned pretty much every car. And uh, it was only made here two years, and we'll get to the significance of this. Uh, model years 1996 and 1997. Mine was in 1996. They only made about 2,000 of these cars total, 1,396, 797. That's here in the United States. They're all uh, six-speed manual transmission cars. A lot of great things about this car. It was the first twin turbo. 911 turbo a first all-wheel drive turbo and it has no electronic nannies no stability control no uh traction control so there's probably not that many of these 2000 cars left and it's really an amazing driving experience if you drive a new turbo or even a 997 turbo it's very electronic you almost kind of stop and steer just put your foot down the electronics figure out the traction and just steer really fast car but not as fun as the 993 Turbo where you don't need coffee in the morning. Driving this car on a Sunday morning is really exhilarating. It's the first turbo that's less than four seconds to 60. So this car was clocked in by car and driver back in the day. I have it in my old car magazines at 3.7 seconds to 60. Remember, there's no launch control back then. So it must be, I wouldn't do it. It's probably a clutch, clutch dump. I wouldn't do it on my car. But uh, I bought my car when they were cheap in 2013. They were only about 60,000 back then. 
and my car uh, doubled in value, even a higher mileage, 80,000 mile car like mine, I think I bought it with 70,000 miles, uh, you know, doubled in value the first 12 months I owned it, probably the best uh, car investment I ever made. But it, it's really a phenomenal car to drive. Now, these cars went even higher than that. Uh, for low mileage cars, went to what, 150, 200. But they kind of came crashing down with all the speculators the last, I'd say, 12 months or so. They've dropped by, back to earth, not to where they were, but a lot lower than that where they were before. So I think it's a good time to buy. These will definitely be 100, 150, 200,000 dollar cars 10 or 20 years from now. They're very simple cars to work on. You could work on this car. You don't have to pay a special mechanic uh, thousands of dollars to fix your car. I've pretty much fixed this car the whole time I had it. And I think in the five years I've owned it, I've spent like $800 on the car. That's how reliable they are. It doesn't have all the electronics, so it's very easy to work on the engine and everything's very accessible. So. I still think it's a great buy for the future. It's not a car you're going to flip and get good money for it a year from now. You're probably going to have to hold it a good 10 years, but I think you'll do really, really well with this car. And when you go to Cars and Coffee and there's 30 GT3s there from all years, you, I promise you, you'll be the only one with the 993 Turbo. All right, and the last car here, you probably have to win Powerball to win or at least have a rich uncle, but it's definitely worth it because this is going to be a million-dollar car one day, and it's this car, the Carrera GT. Now, values right now, low is probably 400000 high is probably 600000 but uh, mark my words, this is going to be a million-dollar car. It may take five years. It may take 10 years, but if you had, I don't, but if you had $500,000 to spend, uh, this car is going to appreciate another 500000 Now, you're going to give some of that back. You know, if you ever ruin one of these carbon fiber wheels or need a transmission or something like that. But this is just an amazing car. And I think people are always going to be looking for this car. Obviously, it's got, you know, uh, the Paul Walker fame to it. But it's also got a V10 normally aspirated engine. It's got a manual transmission. And this is really probably close to a race car to the street. Like, I've been in the new Ford GT. That is race car for the street as well, but that's a very electronic car. You almost feel like you're in a video game driving that. This is like old school analog, and it was only made, uh, you know, two years here. So I think this car is going to continue to appreciate. I wouldn't be surprised if five or ten years from now this easily becomes a million dollar car. You obviously have the uh, the Paul Walker fame, but it's really a, an amazing car to drive. It's a V10 normally aspirated engine, six speed manual uh, transmission. And it really is as close, I think, you can get as an analog race car to the, to the street. Uh, it was only made for a short period of time, and uh, collectors will always be looking for this car. And so are driving enthusiasts who don't even care about collecting. Now, you know, I've been in the new Ford GT. That is probably race car for the street as well, but that's very electronic. When you drive that car, you feel like you're driving a video game. The Carrera GT, you think you're driving like a Le Mans car from the uh, from the 70s. It is really that amazing. And mark my words, that's going to be a million-dollar car. I don't know if it's going to take five years, 10 years, or 15 years, but if you win Powerball, that's probably the first thing I do, buy a Carrera GT for 500 grand, and you're not going to lose money. You're going to give some of that back, obviously, in maintenance and repairs and everything. Uh but it's going to be well worth it, and it's a car that you're going to come out ahead. All right, guys, let me know. Put your thoughts below. Uh, maybe we'll do another one of these, but obviously with less expensive cars. Uh, leave your comments below. I read them all. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.